Kusuria. Okay, so guys, hi, welcome. So this is a very uh, interesting topic. Uh, I was actually one of the late movers in inseeling and angled inseeling. I will be honest with you. you know, I was really one of those late movers because having heard a few in the early 2000s, I was not 100% convinced that this works you know, in terms of home theater. Okay? Yeah. But background music is background music, whatever happens there. So I'll divide this into a couple of things, you know, so types and uses. Okay? So most of the use that we had earlier used to be music in the residential section, you know. So I'm only going to talk about the residential part of it. I'm not interested in the pro audio part of this just, since we are on a pro audio game. So of course, it's music in residences. It's home theaters in residences with the LCR being angled in ceilings. And it's background music in residential, big houses, non-critical area, passages, play area, whatever, whatever you want to call it. And the types basically are various sizes that we have, you know, five and a quarter inch, six and a half inch, eight inch, and in some brands, I believe even 10 inch, three way 10 inches, you know, like origin acoustics. And, all. and we have two basic types, framed and frameless. Okay. Most of these frame designs are now moving out. More and more frameless is being used. So, uh, and the cost goes up in frameless, the extra magnets that they have small neo magnets to hold up the, the thing. So yeah, so uh, mostly it's the frameless game, you know. So one of the most important things guys, you know, is, is, is when you do this angled in ceiling theater, they have, it's never in a, it's never done in a dedicated theater. No, I mean, angled in ceiling mostly is a living room scenario. That's where it takes place. And that's where they usually get installed. And they get installed that way because architects prefer it. And many ways, and I prefer it now, no hassle, no building up for artificial gypsum wall and all of that, POP ceiling. But there is a way to connect the POP ceiling. Okay. Construction of the POP ceiling is very, very necessary when you do a angled in ceiling theater because Basically, the grid structure that is made out of an angle in ceiling theater is an aluminum grid. And POP. Combined together, no, they have this characteristic of rattling at around 125 hertz. Between, anywhere between 100 hertz to 125 hertz, that depending on the air gap from the main, main ceiling, it resonates. Now I'm screwed. Why is this happening? It's happening with the grid is rattling. So the construction of the grid, the best way to construct a grid, whether it's an angled in ceiling theater, is having a pine wood grid created. So you create a grid out of pine wood, three by three grid, you know. But it's very problematic because you get the pine wood cut exactly, you have to treat it, it cannot get uh, thermites, you know, so all of that seasoned pine wood. And uh, people ask me, why pine wood? Pine wood is soft wood. So if I say, oh, I'll use very strong barba tea, you know, BTC, I will use, you know, frame. It vibrates, no? The screw doesn't eat into the wood in the BTC. It doesn't do that. Over a period of time, the screw will loosen. And the ceiling will start moving a lot. So you need a soft wood, eh? like a deodar, silver oak, pine. It should tighten the ceiling. Another way to do it is using aluminum. but using butamen strips, actual strips of butamen to dampen the aluminum struts. The vertical struts is with strips of butamen. So you make it dead. You deaden. And that works beautifully. Only thing is that you have to tie rod it because it doesn't stick forever. So, you know, you put that up. You put that uh, uh, bostic glue and then you kind of hope and you tighten with the tie rods. Little trouble, little some but far less troublesome than making a pine wood ceiling. You want perfection to the pine wood. You don't want, I mean, ceiling on theater, what perfection? Do it the way I told you. Put vitamin strips, tap it on, on the aluminum strut and tie rod it. Stay there for it. Tighten it completely. That rattling will stop, you know, that 125 hertz. Rattling 100 hertz, 125 hertz. You need to take care of that. Otherwise, you know, it's going to be an awful experience 
because it's it rattles and it somewhere or another it always bothers us also in the ceiling construction remember one thing you know you'll have to use recron sheets because there are uh, uh, types of in ceiling speakers many in ceiling speakers don't come with a box okay, so this is a part i'll come with later why the air gap has to be concealed okay a lot of it is got to do with the construction type of the in ceiling speaker you know many home audio manufacturers actually fail in making good in ceiling speakers there is a reason for that because the thilspall parameters that they use for for getting a driver and designing a driver is like what they use for a box loads so if you have a boxed or uh, 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 an in wall or an in ceiling speaker which has its own box from before design that's fine but many of them are uh, without an enclosure they don't have an enclosure they open back, open open back and then they use a safe kind of seal spall parameters that are supposed to be in a box and that many a times creates a problem in the sound quality i believe i could be wrong okay i believe that most in ceiling speakers should be closer to what tar audio is you put a tar audio in your boot you know and it uses the boot as an enclosure it's like an infinite baffle a genuine infinite baffle because that's what a ceiling is a ceiling is a true infinite baffle you know uh, and there's a big difference between a sealed box and an infinite baffle there's a vast difference so it behaves like a genuine infinite baffle and for that the thin small parameters are quite different you know? so what sometimes looks like an unimpressive in ceiling speaker with a smaller magnet and a surround which seems to be quite stiff not compliant you know we get unimpressed by it like what will this play no that is a construction for an infinite baffle having a stiffer surround having a smaller magnet but the qt level needs to be quite high the, the final qtc of the system has to be quite high so uh, like a after doing this it has to be like 0.8 not 707 you will never get 0.8 one lovely lump in the base that's what we want so the kind of construction of loudspeaker for an infinite baffle ceiling is quite different if you want to make a box if you feel like i have to make a box for a open back ceiling speaker my suggestion is don't try to be a loudspeaker designer please don't try to be that write to the manufacturer ask them what is the right volumetric size for the box that i need to make and they know exactly the kind of box that they have to make because they've done their experiment you know and 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 use their guidance don't try to be a loudspeaker designer you will never get it right you can do what you want you will not know how much box filling to pit is it 80% or is it 15% is it 50% that they will tell you you know they will tell you and making a loudspeaker box is not like furniture it requires a lot of understanding of how joints are made and how bracing is done it's experience try it you will learn and it's a, it's a useful thing but do not try to assume what a box should be you know somebody will come to you and say oh oh you are using a 6 and a half inch uh, you need 15 liters somebody will come and say oh you need 20 liters you don't know manufacturer knows ask him he'll tell you how many liters what the depth has to be all that you'll have to calculate from so that's as far as the open back versus closed box and the speakers that work now for we'll first handle the theater part because that's very interesting the the angled in ceiling theater you know and where do we use it why do we use it it's never used in a dedicated theater because it's a living room thing that you are trying to do you know a living room situation sorry yeah so what are the typical angles of an angled in ceiling theater so most of them are around 15 degrees the open back ones you know they're mostly 15 degrees and if you see most living room theaters it's a very typical scenario you know you're 10 to 12 feet away from the panel whatever the display is a projector or or a panel tv uh, your sofa is right up against the rear wall you know i mean behind you're sitting right away there's the way i'm sitting right now and uh, that's how it is 
So if you're like 12 feet away, or 15 degrees is more than enough. 15 degrees angle, you know. Maximum you should stretch it to about 15, 15 feet from where the speaker is. Don't, don't, don't stretch it more than 15 to 16 feet because then you're out of the polar, the main polar lobe of the loudspeaker. You know, the, the loudspeaker also has a lobe, you know, of, 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 of angle, you know, where it fires a lobe. Then there are those 30 degrees speakers, you know. They usually have a box behind them and they have a, since they're so sharply angled, to fire at a longer distance, maybe 25 feet. They have cushioned them, you know, they have foam wadding in front of them to absorb the reflection of that box, the front angle. Frankly, I have no, I've had one prior experience of such speakers. I've met many people who have tried, done it. I don't know how many people have been successful at getting great results with those. I'm quite sure there must be some way to do it. But uh, adjusting for that absorption, that foam, is something you best speak to the manufacturer. Okay. And usually those speakers are very high. 30 degrees means, you know, you have a large insealing gap. You know, you have to have like a standard without a box. Insealing speaker is about ceiling, angle insealing. The ceiling can be about six and a half to eight inches the air gap. 30 degree one, you need maybe a foot, foot and a half, you know, maybe 15, 15, 15 between 12 to 18 inches, depending on the shallowness of the box, you know. So, A, you need a very deep ceiling for that. The POP to the main ceiling is very, very large, the gap. And the angle is is, is something, uh, uh, you know, that the cushion being in the front, how do you equalize that? Those are, those are real challenges. Uh, then, of course, when you do that, the surround speaker is not identical to that, you know. So, you can have a Two way in the front with two woofers and a tweeter and the surround because they were doing. So consistency is of course a different thing altogether. Uh, but I think the distance is understanding distance is my point of view. Understanding this is very important. Like a 15 degree angle speaker, I think about 12 to 18 feet, maybe even nine feet is great. But essentially, the furthest is about 18, and I think I would be more. I would be very uncomfortable on 15 feet, and this is. Considering a nine foot ceiling, you know, that eight and a half to 10 foot ceiling, I'm considering that so 10 foot ceiling, 18 feet, height of the ceiling, finished ceiling. And if you want to go beyond that, it's the greater angles, the 30 degrees, you know, so you go to 20, 22 feet. So, so I, have, uh, I just want to interrupt you one moment here. Uh, are you yeah. also going to be covering uh, these uh, non, uh, non, let's say circular uh, in in ceiling speakers which are basically like a rectangular shaped box which have that, multiple right that that's what i was talking about the 30 degree speakers are usually at that right they are those basically are that, multiple are, yeah yeah they're multiple drivers they're not coaxially mounted right. or concentrically mounted but correct they are multiple drivers and therefore their 30 degree angle guys are mostly constructed like that. okay right right sorry uh, and they have this form in front of it you know you've got to i mean it's, it's a challenge. Those speakers are a challenge because at what, at what angle does it have a reasonably good measured response, you know, at 20 feet, at 18 feet. So that foam, what does it do at and the driver angular angle at what, what does it do across distance? We don't, it has to be, you have to, have to have, you have to have practice with a given speaker, your model from a brand, right. you have to use that to figure out right. where it sounds right, you know, and what you need to do to make it sound right. While right. the 15 degrees is not so much of a challenge. There is, there is that, 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 that front in front of the driver is not there, you know, it doesn't exist. Right. It's a very small, shallow thing. It's a very small foam and it's not a problem with the HF drive. Right. So there are the distances, you know, and then many people ask me, uh, ask this, you know, is an Atmos theater possible, you know, with an angle in ceiling. And there has to be a minimum three foot distance between the bed layer and the ceiling layer. Yeah, boss, I, I look at it like this, you know, it's a distance game for me. Yes. I'll be honest. So example, if my seating is 15, 18 feet away, I don't mind that in ceiling front in front of me, you know, if I'm sitting at nine feet. I'll not have it. If I'm sitting at nine feet, 10 feet, I'll not have seven channels. If I'm sitting at 12 feet plus, I'll have seven channels, you know, because I need to cl clear that gap, you know, close the gap between the LCR on the front and the surround, which is right on top of me here, but so that's how it is placed. So 
you have to be very careful about whether when you want to choose seven channels or five channels because anyway the minute you say atmos it is object based and how you stare at the object and how you angle the tweeter one of the things that you must try to keep in mind when you do a theater like this is stay within a grid you know like your lcr is let's say 9 feet across the atmos also has to be in the same line as the l and the r 9 feet across and preferably your surround also have to be within that grid you know sometimes the surround gets straight out you know you have the distances and all that you know i can adjust for distance and all that that for surround is okay for at most try to avoid it straight try to stay within the grid of the left and the right you know 9 feet across 9 feet across 10 feet across 10 feet across you know and many a times when you have a very strange situation you know like there is some some light fitting coming so my atmos my right atmos is 2 feet closer to the center position than the left atmos you know mm-hmm. because it has been pulled away the left has been pulled mm-hmm. away because there is some light mm-hmm. fitting here. don't do that atmos pass you will go through hell to to align it mm-hmm. okay it's okay when it's it's here you know this because after 15 degrees after 15 degrees the human brain behaves differently your perception of sound is completely different i'll give you a simple trick okay take a coin take a coin close your eyes throw it on the floor you will know exactly where the coin is hit the floor you will know it you will say ah over there the coin take the same coin hit it on the ceiling you will be ambiguous about where it is hit the ceiling because we are not programmed evolution has not happened in a manner in which we know that's why we get scared of thunder so much not because it's loud it's loud very we don't it's know where it is yeah we don't you cannot you cannot localize it. you cannot localize it yeah you don't know where it is and that's that puts fear in us you know that is what puts real fear fear in us because you cannot localize it especially above 15 degrees we cannot because our our perception of sound our frequency response our hrt of effect only changes the head yeah. transfer function is completely different after 15 degrees so uh, kushru uh, if i have to just uh, repeat what you said in a, in in a sense about uh, certain let's say non symmetries that might come up in the room because of let's say some lighting fixtures so uh, what do you advise is that if at all there are some lighting fixtures which are going to let's say uh, uh, make the room asymmetrical then avoid those uh, corresponding atmos channels is what you're saying yes avoid it you'll never align okay. it okay you'll tear your head off you will never align it right. you'll go banana thank you thanks yeah okay so now speaking about that subject what is the eq desired okay for a angled in ceiling which is let's average it out 12 feet ahead of you correct no it's it's above there like that it's nearly 15 degrees you know you're sitting there most theater when you hear it the voices in front of you i mean uh, the picture in front of you and the dialogue is in the sky correct and that's what most people have in their heads you know it says bro angle in ceilings don't work so yeah, they they work but they don't maybe they don't work as well as speakers at a, at a year level how do you bring that dialogue into the i level that is a that is a question that we have right guys okay so you need to bypass that you need to modify for the head transfer function that takes place at an angle the first thing in any speaker that is above our eye, eye line is drawing attention to itself and that's how the brain works is high frequency we will hear hf first and that draws our attention directly it will draw attention on that's what the sound is you need to on the parameter equalizer of any avr modern avr that you have is shaft everything down above 6.5 kilohertz shelf it not a full shelf a tapered shelf you know you'll have to do it so it is less down at 6.5 more down at 12 kilohertz it's a, it's a taper 
okay and you need to shelve it and you need to experiment with it because this is not a rule just 6.5 because this changes as with the distance so supposing i'm sitting 8 feet away versus i'm sitting 18 feet away how many db's that happens is only a learning curve but believe me you practice it and you get it right because this is not going to happen within one day of eqing it takes a minimum 2 3 days of sitting and getting this done you know and and hearing multiple dialogues or multiple movies effects atmos non atmos because in living room they will say boss i i want to see world cup i want to see sarbhu serial i want to see news also you know so you have to work that out but that shelf that shelf is nearly 4 to 6 db okay i mean that much uh, to get the dialogue to come to the screen and uh, i'm not talking through my hat amit is over here amit you are there right Uh, Amit is there on Phoenix audio video. Yes, yes. Yeah. So, Amit, we have done this in your place, you know, where you have had people who come to you and say, "Boss, where is the speaker behind the screen?" And you you bring the screen down or take it up, and they can't see the speaker, and they refuse to believe it's an angled in ceiling speaker. Yes. They refuse to believe it only, you know. Then you have to say, "Okay, boss, I will run a pink noise test," you know, and then the signal comes. Then he says, "Ah, the sound is coming now from the left angle, center, right." So it is possible. we've done it we know it happens so using that shelf and using it that sh- correctly is a very very important thing there is another equalizer thing that will happen which sometimes you fall into trouble so after you construct the ceiling properly sometimes something will still rattle you know because you don't have control over your craftsman no the guy who's making the pop the guy who's making you don't have control sometimes so always remember that 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 noise is centered somewhere on 100 hertz to 125 hertz the best thing is to put a frequency you know a a a 1/3 octave frequency signal you know so you start at 20 hertz 30 hertz 40 hertz 50 hertz 63 cycles 80 cycles 100 125 150 and then where it really rattles you know you know that's the frequency so you need to notch it out with a very steep notch the very narrow q you know very high q narrow notch it out as much as required don't notch out too much because you may you may need to bring down 8 9 decibel and you will knock down 20 db you lose power on both sides of that notch you know so be very careful how much you notch out but remember that it is usually between that 100 to 125 a uh, one way to do it is if you are using in ceiling subwoofers which is a very tricky thing to do then you have to be very careful okay be very careful guys i'm telling you right now if you don't have experience of using in ceiling subs isolating the subs making a ceiling like that do not put in ceiling subs all right who can, those people who can manage it have practice have done it by all means do it uh it's a subject i don't want to discuss because it's something i cannot discuss it i'll have to show you how to do it. physically draw it how to make the ceiling you know because you've done this uh this is just okay uh, while while okay uh, you uh, don't discuss it but uh, uh, any uh, any aspects that you want to touch upon like why is it uh, such a complicated topic like uh, the, primarily i believe tend to believe that it's a structural uh, design which needs to be factored into picture as you already described for even the speaker Uh, you require to structurally reinforce the uh, the uh, the the ceiling. Usually, but in okay, case, I tell you. Usually, what happens? Okay, over here, you will need a ceiling isolation kit. Yes. Okay. So the subwoofer is never really touching the jib. It's mounted on the isolation kit. The jib is put, and then you screw the speaker onto the isolation kit. Right. It requires practice. And remember yes. one thing: they are pro- making that subwoofer and isolation kit based on. Jib, yes. We use plastic. If the material is, yeah, if the material is different. We use POP. Yeah, yeah. Which is very different. It's, it's different. It's very different. You know. So therefore, yes. I say, whenever we do in ceiling speakers, we don't do it with an. We don't do it with an isolation kit. Mm. We actually mm. find out from the manufacturer what is the ideal box size. Mm. Screw the box size onto the right. uh, box into the ceiling. Right. Make that POP ceiling. Cut a hole in the POP and then screw it onto the box right so it's a very difficult uh, or you right. know or a dog tag it to the box and the uh, pop so making a box 
fitting it in, calculating the volume of the box because you will have six inches. Mm. We'll have only six inch depth overall. Suppose you know, and your driver itself will be four, four and a half inch depth for in case of a subwoofer. Right. So you know you have to be very careful how you make that box. How you mount it? You have to mount it before the POP is being constructed. Then there'll be a grid over there, for example. You know your grid will come there, where your most desirable place of a subwoofer is in the room. A grid will come over. There, you know. So these are these are very hairy subjects. So I don't want to get into the subwoofer, in ceiling subwoofer, because it's a challenge. You know, it's it 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 requires courage when you do it now, because you're going to fail at one or two sites. You know, you're going to go through hell in those two, three, four sites, whatever how many were sites before you perfect it. So therefore, I would suggest till you don't meet me. You know, because this is something I can't do on a Zoom call. Till you don't meet me, till I don't draw it, till I don't show you a couple of examples, you know. Don't don't get into my advice. Then coming to the crossover desired in a in ceiling theater because mostly your sub is down, speaker is on top. How do you how do you get them to work together? It's a very difficult, very difficult. What we have learned is that if you are doing home theaters, Dolby itself. Dolby itself has a 120 hertz brick wall filter. 120 hertz, point ones is brick wall. Nothing plays above that. Then you, like a very smart guy, will say, "Boss, 80 hertz is the crossover given to us. Suggested crossover frequency to us. So you will give it 80 hertz. Okay. 120 plus the 80. Okay. And Your combined lump factor, you will actually subwoofer something like at 60 hertz, or even less than 60 hertz. And your in ceiling is cutting or beginning to cut off at 100 hertz because you're giving the 80 hertz cut off. There's a vast disjoint. You know, you hear a vast disjoint. If you have a good AVR like a, which allows you separate subwoofer cut off, either Denon and Maharajas do. So your high pass is different from your subwoofer cutoff. Put your subwoofer something like 150 on the processor, all right, and your subwoofer crossover on your plate back panel of the uh, uh, subwoofer at full 200 hertz. That 150, 120 notch will happen anyways. 150, 120 uh, Dolby low pass along with the 150 on your AVR. Will come close to somewhat like the 80 hertz. Okay, guys. Now, why is this so important? And I'll and I'll explain to you why this is so important. An 80 hertz signal, 80 hertz, is approximately, I think, 14 feet long. If I'm not mistaken, yeah, 80 should be about 28 feet long is 40 hertz. Yeah, 14 feet long. So 14 feet long wave, and half of that is seven foot. That half wavelength is 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 less than the difference between your floor subwoofer and your in ceiling in ceiling speaker. You got what I'm trying to say, guys? Yep. So your your phase on your Amplifier module or on your AVR, you have to be very careful of. You have to be very careful of that. It's not just about. It's not just about distance, you know, that twelve uh, uh, feet versus ten feet. That corrects it to a very large. Distance. It does, okay. But somewhere you will hear that guy, you know, on the floor. And I always say the best subwoofer is, you know, what is the best subwoofer, guys? What is the best subwoofer alignment? I always say the best subwoofer alignment is you only realize it when the sub is switched off. You don't realize the sub is playing. When you switch it off, you realize that oh, it was playing. That is the best subwoofer alignment. If you hear the sub, it's all over. No, I mean you can hear the sub. It's not a subwoofer. It's not. It's not an LFE subwoofer. The only time you should realize the subwoofer is 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 in the is in the mix is when you switch it off. So to get that alignment, 
is very very challenging be very careful about your crossover frequency okay don't go by the textbook or oh, 80 hertz means 80 hertz 100 hertz means 100 hertz with the in ceiling theaters it's not that way and this none of your training program those gurus who you listen to will ever tell you this they will never ever tell you this this because this is their they are key of how a in ceiling sub speaker has to work they will never teach you this because you are always struggling with the lf always you know that the disjoint is always there they will never teach you that shelf your brain has to shelf it down they will never teach you this and these the only the guys who who were right in the beginning you know in the early ages of avr like 20 25 years ago when angled in ceilings were just beginning as a as a whole game now this is a paper that was done i want to say paper it was a kind of a it was in a man it was in a in some kind of an explanation sony used to have the esprit avrs esprit series and in that there used to be an in ceiling mode angled in ceiling theater mode you know you press it saying that there is an angled in ceiling speaker it used to eq for that it used to shelf it down so that was like 25 years ago so guys who were there from that era and who have read so much i used to read a lot i learned it at that point of time you know i'm not some i'm not, like i say you know, i don't have a crystal ball i'm not a mantra you do read a lot you know? so that's i remember that you know this is what you do so getting that shelf along with the subwoofer alignment to make that disappear on the top and to make that disappear on the bottom is practice is nothing but practice more practice and even more practice okay and understanding distances you know i'm 12 feet away what happens i'm 14 feet away what happens i'm 9 feet away what happens when i'm 9 feet away where does the subwoofer go so you know normal normal thing would be like boss put the subwoofer in the corner not in a in ceiling theater never do that preferable in a in ceiling theater is 25% the width of the room you know so suppose i'm firing front to back this is 20 feet preferable at 1/4 which is 5 feet from that wall you know full full width so 25% is a trick usually where it kind of disappears in the room Just keep that in mind all right now i've get, i i have uh, another thing that is uh, important over here is grills so many sabu uh, in ceiling guys give you square grill and round grill options okay whatever you do now guys when you paint a grill now make sure that the paint is not overdone okay and you have a scrim cloth behind you are wondering what the scrim cloth the scrim cloth is when you paint the cloth absorbs all the paint from behind and leaking into the holes so never remove the scrim cloth and throw it away and then now i'll paint the grill the scrim has to be there paint the grill let it dry out pick up the scrim and then throw it away be very careful i have seen many many sites where the paint jobs turn out to be horrible it's a horror what 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 ends up happening with a roller you know you do a roller and then you know the paint is dripping and I mean, it's a horror so be very careful about this whole 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 painting process in a grill and and it sounds very easy again <laughs> it requires patience a lot of patience be very careful of kind of paint you have and don't overdo the paint it'll be a it'll be a horror i i i i have something to say with regarding to the size of the speaker that you use you know phone phone size and many people would tell me i need an 8 inch in ceiling you know i need an 8 inch in ceiling theater uh, in ceiling speaker i find that most useful for ceiling that are more than 10 feet and remember when you have an 8 inch in ceiling speaker the crossover starts becoming more difficult in a two way because the off axis response of an 8 inch then coming again back to a 1 inch tweeter you will have a null somewhere off axis you know you'll, you'll you'll i won't say null but you'll have a dip in the response i find the ideal size to be a 6 6 and a half inch because that gives a gives a easy crossover at around 
2.5, 2.6 kilohertz for a six and a half inch. The minute you have an eight inch, the crossover frequency of that between an eight and a tweeter is around 1,600 hertz to maybe maximum 2,000 hertz. And for that, you need a very expensive tweeter or a very complex crossover. You know, and that's not happening in a in an affordable in ceiling theater speaker. You need some very expensive HF unit to do two kilohertz. So don't look at the woofer size. You know, oh, eight inch play very loud. Boss, in ceiling speaker needs to have a wide dispersion angle, especially the crossover frequency, which is usually very difficult for a small tweeter or an affordable tweeter to do. You know, three kilohertz is where it really happens. So. Avoid going more than a six and a half inch gain. Just avoid that. Because your off axis response is going to be very poor. Very poor. I have seen manufacturers who had, you know, many manufacturers who had, had started full on with eight inch angle in ceiling being very expensive. And as time went by, and feedback came through. Because, you know, most of these guys are box speaker designers. They design boxes. The brand is, oh, now we'll make an in ceiling, but that's a demand. They have not got a speciality guy who want, from the car audio industry who understands what an in-ceiling speaker is supposed to do. Because that is a speciality of a car audio guy. That's his speciality. Okay. Because he knows exactly what happens in an off-axis. Because if the car, the, the speaker is on the deck behind you. You're sitting in front. He knows the reflection ratio from the ceiling, glass, rear, rear shield. He knows all those things. Okay. So you have to meet loudspeaker designers and especially the car audio. So when I was in Peerless, we actually actually had a good op opportunity of meeting guys who used to design car audio for Yamo and all that. So they, they teach you the difference. And then they were the champions who made the in-ceiling speakers. They were the guys, not the home audio box designers. They weren't, they weren't the champions. So, so you have to see the dispersion angle. What is going to happen off axis? I'm sitting 12 feet here, boss. My angle of incidence is something like 15, maybe more than 20 degrees sometimes, you know, the sound. So be very careful what you do. Three-way in-ceiling speakers can solve the problem, but they, there are two disadvantages. Number one, the, that can becomes very deep. So you need 12 inches of the height ceiling where it's available. By all means, go ahead and do it, you know. Multi-way in-ceiling speakers may, may not work because, you know, you're, 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 you're not off axis in this domain. You are off axis in that domain, you know. I mean, not only this way, but even this way. So how that crossover polar plot responds, I don't know. I mean, some guys can sort it out. Some brands can. Some brands for looks do it. For marketing purposes do it. You better be very sure when you see a three-way, what it does. And the best way to do it is very simple, you know. Put it on the floor, put it on the floor, walk, walk. If you, if you start seeing nulls, you know that I can't use this. If it's seamless in the horizontal domain, though I know we hear differently like this and differently like this, at least you know what the polar plot is doing, you know, how it is, how it is creating a problem off axis, on axis. So three ways really experiment, you know, I mean, don't, don't just shaft it or a three way high power handling. My client will be happy. I'll sell one in ceiling speaker at two lakh rupees. It doesn't work now, boss. <laughs> it's going to be a very expensive lesson for all of us. And I've paid, paid a price for it in my past. So being already honest with you. Uh, mounting the speaker onto a ceiling, which is plaster of Paris, which tends to be uneven, rather than like gypsum, which tends to be very even. Please put a, I mean, Amit has mastered this, you know, he's there, you know, I mean, he's done a lot of work on this. He's mastered this. And he actually, I must be thankful to him for teaching me this, you know, uh, he puts a gasket between the rim and the ceiling and he makes it airtight and the results have been stunning. I mean, you know, that air gap, because, you know, somewhere that, that, that POP is not hundred percent linear. It has that leakage or something you know and that gasket tightens it beyond belief you know so 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 i learned that from him you know i mean usually i'm the one teaching him this one he taught me boss <laughs> and he experiments a lot so so that was a really good thing he 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 he, he did you know and uh, 
another thing that you must do is that uh, if you're using an open back you know uh, a speaker without a box in the in ceiling in the pop please try to fill up the air gap with 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 uh, absorptive material where the air gap tends to resonate you know and and creates noise through your other fittings you know which is another topic i will come to right now after this okay so ac will rattle the lights will rattle so avoid that when you make an in ceiling speaker or in ceiling na boss one of the first things you guys need to do when you make the ceiling na is tell the architect boss every technical light over there no, is gasketed it has to be gasketed every technical light that ceiling spe speaker starts playing if it's a open back or you know close back sometimes and the light fitting is not gasketed na no, you will hear that and then remove every light fitting try to figure out which one it is client has lost his head he says all of you are idiots you should told me this right in the beginning aapko maine kyu hire kiya bhaiya aapka hi kaam hai starting mein batana humko so remember every item on the ceiling has to be gasketed every item any fitting technical fitting this fitting that fitting architect was gasket that you know and architects appreciate that yeah boss it's something they have also not thought of you know so you you get it done yeah. don't make it painful for you afterwards you know they they where can i get the gasket from shit shit nonsense bloody uh, this is something called amazon yeah. but as if they have never heard of jeff bezos also so get that done you know i mean gasket is easily available i am not i have written over here subwoofer placement and i was thinking i will uh, do the in ceiling thing but you know afterward as an afterthought i said i won't discuss this because this is in ceiling subwoofer like i said earlier something i'll discuss whenever i meet whoever any 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 meet we meet and you guys come across me ask me 15 20 if i'll get around and i'll tell you how to do it uh, okay kutu kutu uh, rahul is asking a question is it uh, right to use open baffle ceiling speaker what do you mean by open baffle they all means you mean without a back no you mean a speaker which is without a box right rahul you want to unmute yourself and uh, uh, maybe rephrase your question no i mean if 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 it uh, talking about music from ceiling speakers is it right yeah. in modern day homes to use ceiling speakers with open baffles because as you said that you have to gasket every light you have to you have to uh, you fill up the you mean by open gaps. baffle you mean that you are mounting the speaker on a wooden baffle and you are hanging it from the ceiling yeah that's that's the most common way of doing ceiling speakers so no 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 the most less common way of doing ceiling speakers is 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 with the dog tags and uh, screwing it i mean uh, dog tagging it to the hanging it from ceiling. a hook yeah no no poping it to the ceiling no to the pop the plaster of paris to that that's what you're saying right mm, yes by open baffle open baffle is a different thing boss i mean you are talking about a speaker without a no a, back box no ba ah, so that's not open baffle that's just a speaker without a back box okay i always prefer infinite baffle they call infinite baffle speakers so because the the, the ceiling operates as an infinite baffle an infinitely long baffle yes know? there is no front to back cut off and open baffle there is a front to back cut off because the back and the front will oh. mechanic will will acoustically cut each other off after the width of the plank of wood so you are talking about an infinite baffle loudspeaker without a back box yes so what about mm -hmm. that is it right I to use the, when when you want to listen i to prefer me. that only but make sure which Why brand you use see make sure what brand you use see here are the some of the thing that an infinite baffle speaker should have okay it is usually quite a stiff surround it's not a very well, compliant that, surround it's quite a stiff what, surround that's what it should have but what 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 i wanted to know about them the majority of the things that are available they they have not considered the facts uh, of uh, you know using it for pure listening music and not not having leakages it's 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 available so if if you are using that kind of a speaker is it right to uh, make a wooden box you know uh, like i mentioned like earlier if you want to put a box that that kind of speaker into a box mm. find out from the manufacturer what is the volume of the box exactly it's a task it's it's easier to use an infinite baffle lord speaker for my brand who knows what they are doing yes so uh, it's it's safer to buy uh, speakers with back boxes in cases of people who don't know 
they can avail infinite backup. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They, of course, you should. I'm People not have no, to have no. a back box itself. If if you if you don't want to take a risk, but if you know what your brand is doing, you know which brand or loudspeakers you are using, and that, that speaker the, the, that is, is for audio for agent to use. I I would say I huh? mean for, for that 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 thing to do is for audio legends. For us, no, not, it no, is, it is about simple. closing a site and uh, giving better Just quality than what is generically. Just take a speaker. Push it. Push it mechanically. Okay. If it's very stiff, it's usually okay. for a infrared baffle. Okay. If it's very compliant, like a box loudspeaker, no, and moving in and out, you know. Yeah. Then you need a ram box. Okay. See if you take a car or a speaker of the old days, right? Like a Pioneer or something, whatever. Try pushing it, na no, boss. It's very difficult to push it in. You know that. Yeah, it's, it's got, got a lot of resistance. Yeah, it's got a lot. It's very rigid. Yes, the surround is very rigid. It's meant for a. It's meant for a. Your car deck, you know, which is your boot is used as the enclosure. Yeah. Instead of the boot, you have a ceiling. So yeah, so so I'll tell you a test. I don't want to take brand names. Okay, this is, and I gave it to one of my couple of my dealers. You know, uh, none of the brand. Uh, a guy, and this ha- this happened during COVID. This is amazing. This. Ha- I'll tell you something. Hello, I think I pressed something. Uh-huh. Yeah, okay. I'll tell you something. So in the COVID time, there was one guy who was a car audio guy in America. Okay, he had nothing to do, so he said, "I'll do, I'll test home audio loudspeakers." And he has all the kit to test and all. I mean, all the measurement, measurement, everything he has because he's a competition level car audio. Guy. So he decided because he had a large house, he'll in the basement he'll try these home audio things. He can't fit fit out cars. He did a comparison of. Six loudspeakers across five brands. All of them are all of them high end. Okay, means known brands. I'm not talking about the niche. Think of brand B, brand F, brand M with a ribbon tweeter, M N K. I'll name the only box speaker he had. M N K. The other ones all had black boxes. All these brand B, brand F. They all have back boxes, brand M with a ribbon tweeter, and brand R owned by Harman with an open, open uh, no back box behind. So, and he put them all in an American drywall construct. He constructed an entire drywall, and he put it there inside. Revel was the cheapest dual five and a half inch with a tweeter. Okay, everything also very large speaker, two seven inch woofers, mid range, fancy tweeter, fancy back box, all of that tamasha. The best measuring loudspeaker turned out to be the cheapest Revel. The best sounding speaker turned out to be the cheapest Revel because it measured the best. Everything else had a huge hump at around two hundred hertz because the box was too small. So it had a huge peak at one fifty cycles, a huge notch in the crossover frequency because those guys didn't know so what happens also, with an infinite baffle. So does it because also prove what, that uh, the speaker? So does it also prove that the speaker had no leakages? No, no. I mean, uh, see, you have, gypsum, you have a gypsum. The You have a gypsum. See, you have a gypsum. Is great. Okay. Okay. But measuring, no. Was the back box? You made a speaker. But what about leakages? I mean, when 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 I'm going to an apartment. You made a back apartment. box. See, you made a back box. Yeah. The brand has a back box. The brand has supplied you a black box. The problem is they have designed a woofer that is used mostly in vented boxes, and they have shafted it in a seal box. It has a huge peak at around hundred hertz, two hundred hertz. Okay. So you got what I'm trying to say. Only a car or a manufacturer will know how to make a proper infinite baffle, or a guy who knows how to make a sealed box. Yeah, that's my point. So if if you're looking for a for a say we we're looking for a, everything in a box, you know, a jack of all kind of a speaker, okay, that will have great sound, uh, less maintenance, and uh, no leakages. Would you be able to? Would you be able to? No, no, no. I, 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 not, not, not how to achieve it. I, I would say, would you be able to name a brand? I don't want to. Are OEM? I know you do OEM. So I don't want to, no boss. Forget it, no boss. I don't want to go there only, no boss. I never talk about my brand. I never, I never talk market, about it. Generic, huh? market, generic market way. Like you named so many right now. You said M N K. You may mention Harman. Is it any uh, speaker? Do you think that is architecturally? Abhi, just in Mumbai apartment, uh, 
जो है देर सीलिंग्स आर ऑल फॉल्स एंड दे आर ओपन अप टिल द एंड ऑफ द होम सो यू वुड वांट टू कंट्रोल सम लीकेजेस इन अदर रूम्स बिकॉज आई आई हैव फेस दैट थिंग एंड इट वाज हैपनिंग बिकॉज द स्पीकर वाज लीकिंग अ लॉट ऑफ साउंड बिहाइंड देयर देन देयरफॉर आई सेड यू नीड टू इफ इट्स एन ओपन बैक स्पीकर यू हैव टू क्लोज दैट कैविटी विद अ एब्जॉर्प्शन मटेरियल so you have to put you have to you have to put you have to put dacron throughout the ceiling okay you know you have to you have to close those okay. those compartments okay and then you have to because it's an open bank you know that's why i said there are open space you have to absorb that and that will But have to be done at the outset always no boss right so you you are in ceiling can never in ceiling can never see this is the point that's what i said in the way in ceiling can never be an afterthought your construction of a ceiling is the most important that rattling of the ceiling is the most important thing got it you know it's not just making four holes or five holes and then you know, the dog tagging it it's it's not that your, your ceiling has cannot rattle you're the, using the, the, you're using pop not gypsum so you know your gasketing is very important you're absorbing the sound above that because it's an open baffle you know i mean i mean uh, sorry it's a it's an open mm. open back it's an open back there is no can yeah So you have to absorb everything. You line the whole ceiling up so it doesn't uh, resonate. The air column doesn't resonate. Exactly. It doesn't go to so other areas, other rooms. So my question was in context out of all your experience that have you ever found a speaker that could you know cut down all those uh, all all this headache or or for people who don't have an idea of how to control leakages or the gasketing uh, feature. So. So apparently there's still nothing <laughs> as yet. If Kushru, if Kushru cannot tell me one uh, brand, I think it's still in the process. No, boss. I know the brands here. I just don't want to open exactly. my mouth. Exactly. No. I give you Revel. Oh. No. I, so I that means Revel. there are. So that means there are. So that means there I are. I told you. That I told you Revel. No. I mean, so I'm, you're being I'm giving unfair, you the name. Unfair to this young boy. You know. No, see, I'm telling you Revel. No, because I'm telling you that. Okay. Revel, as I said, it it it, but, but it's open back, so it will have leakages. I mean, it's not possible that leakages not... from where. from back it will it will leave leak leak, leak sound no? into the ceiling you mean yeah into the ceiling treat the ceiling no that's what i'm going to tell you exactly so then okay okay i get it i get treat it treat the ceiling so a great sounding speaker is ceiling speaker is revel basically so, i love that. uh right. rahul uh, i think uh, yeah we'll get uh, let uh, we we'll get that yeah, right, please uh, please carry on yeah, yeah. so one other thing guys you know what uh what you need to do is I'll come back. How many of you guys were there in the earlier thing about the consistency game? Okay. So in in ceiling speakers, now keep zonal consistency. Use the same basic speaker. What you're using an Atmos surrounds an angled in inversion of that same speaker would be great. You know, I mean, you have an angled inversion, and this is a down firing dining areas, bedrooms. Try to use the same loudspeaker. You know, keep that zonal consistency. It will be really help you. You know. as a client it will really really help you okay so usually i'll come back to scenarios that we face with in ceiling theater okay so most of the theaters with this in ceiling theater is the most helpful is modern apartments where you enter and the length is there and you're firing the theater width wise one half of the room and the other half of the room is the dining area typical you know my back is up against the wall my tv is in front of me the dining area to my left or to my right depending how it works I have an angled in ceiling speaker. If Atmos is possible, Atmos surround subwoofer, and then I'll have two additional speakers near my dining area. That is a typical thing. Then we come to the bedroom area of such places. My experience has been, and most people may not agree to this, but I believe me when I tell you this. Don't use two. If you're using in ceiling speakers for a bedroom, guy is not into stereo. He wants in ceiling speakers. Avoid using two speakers. it never powers the bedroom properly you know there are always nulls and dips and notches and undesirable kind of sound uh it's better to you for probably in a square formation or a rectangular formation and that it is very smooth in the transition and how it works you know across the room so i i i think try to use four yeah. more than, sometimes the bedroom is very small like a bombay apartment okay two you can't use four you know but i have been out, when you go out of town you know you go to a, a, a place where bungalows is the norm you have large bedrooms in ceiling speakers use for use them judiciously and use for it 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 really does a better job you know of of covering the space much more evenly than 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 
than than that also in in ceiling speakers when you are using the same ceiling speakers na don't skimp on the electronics you know home theater pe high end dal diya then rest of the areas is is not critical don't do that have a even handed amplification you know it is very necessary in ceiling speakers don't cost much you have you have, use good electronics and try to keep them consistent you know within that within that uh, 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 price bracket you know of of that you know so so please try to do that it's very important you know? otherwise it can be quite a a a, a challenge because you know then getting the same sound you know and then usually what happens in these sites client comes one day and he calls all of the vendors on one day and then he says acha bhaiya you know abhi home theater sunao abhi dining sunao abhi bedroom sunao ye bedroom acha nahi baj raha hai wo bedroom uh, home theater se acha nahi bajta you know not sounding the same the bedi dining room is not sounding is sounding better than my bedroom why you use a cheap amplifier there so that sound immediately he can hear that because you've taken an expensive avr zone to you put the dining room so the expensive avr is driving that you put a cheap amplifier over there he can hear it it's instant and don't assume that they can't hear it boss if he doesn't hear it on that day he'll hear it 3 months later and call you it's not it's not the same there is some problem he can't explain he'll call it a problem he uses the word problem you have a problem here then boss what have i done wrong so don't skip on the electronics you know because it's it's, it's a smart thing to do the last thing i'll come to is something that you know many areas have ceiling speakers in the bathroom wet areas be very careful of that as far as possible try to use uh, proper bathroom speakers and there's a difference in the bathroom speaker is that not only is the the drive unit kind of water resistant what they call like a polypropylene with a with a proper rubber surround you know the grills usually are stainless steel and with corrosion proof paint on it you know so normal grills that we use are ms grills or aluminum grills with a paint that can catch corrosion bathroom speakers which is dedicated bath sometimes you wonder yaar this bathroom speaker is so expensive why is it so expensive it's the ss grill the stainless steel grill that is provided to you that you don't realize that because they all look white you don't know why it's costing more so they have stainless steel grill and they have corrosion proof paint over there that's why they specified as bathroom speakers so understand that very well you know sometimes you'll say yaar the owner client will say why is my main area speaker costing less than my bathroom speaker in you don't have the answer at when he ask you that you don't have the answer because we don't study these manuals very well we say bathroom speaker bathroom mein istemal ho jayega it has an ss grill we have not read because that is written down you know the specification you know it shall be provided with a stainless steel grill with anti corrosive paint able to handle so much degrees temperature between this and this temperature it will handle this much wetness so study your bathroom speakers very well because you know these are indian somehow like to listen to music while they sitting on the throne boss hear it yeah. you know so that's another thing that i i would want to say be very careful when you specify bathroom speakers don't go shaft any other speaker onto that because the magnet even the magnets holding the grills and avoid in bathroom speakers try to avoid uh, uh frameless huh try to avoid that have frame directly snap it frame don't do not do not use frameless it can be a horror you know those magnets get corroded in our weather and the grill will fall on his head when he's on his throne you know avoidable i think that's how i covered it the my main thing my main thing was the ceiling construction be very careful of that when you're doing ceiling fitters on day one only you know don't just put the quotation over the ceiling speaker you'll have to monitor that and don't try to think that you know oh you know uh i will fight a price war over here i will get lower than that guy to monitor that that ceiling construction you'll have to go four times to the site factor that cost in you know installation cost it's very important you know and your guys your staff will have to learn what a good ceiling is they have to learn that they have to explain to them you have to give them good good understanding this is how it's constructed this is how you dampen with bitumen sheets this is how the grid is made out of pine uh, how you need um, to make so uh, you said you said uh, bitumen right so asphalt asphalt is what you mean i mean the texa sheets yeah basically yeah, what yeah. is using what what is using car car bitumen. road dampening bitumen bitumen mm. bitumen sheets yeah you cut it and you just put in the aluminum the aluminum grid is i just snap it into that with glue tie rod it so it stays 
it becomes like it becomes like stone here was nothing doesn't move doesn't rattle nothing happens okay so i think i kind of covered it any guys any questions i am willing to take not that there'll be much question in this 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 session i think but anyways if you do i'll by all means uh so i request people who have questions to uh maybe uh, raise their hand there is option of raising hand and uh, and uh, of course you can unmute yourself and ask the question so i'll take it one by one so please go ahead anyone from the audience uh hello can i ask a question marzban here hi marzban hi, Marzban. hello ah yes marzban hi um Kusho, I just want to know: Is uh, uh, you know many sitting speakers like you were discussing earlier, back boxes or back cans as they are called. Most of the pro ceiling speakers have got back cans. Yeah, most, most of the home product. ceiling speakers don't come with fucking back cans. No, they don't. They don't. They don't. So they don't. is that intentional or? Um, yes, it is intentional. It or is intentional. just to break down the cost? What is it? No, no, it is intentional because they are designed to have a very high Q that works. in a ceiling which behaves like an infinite baffle okay so the ceiling because an infinite baffle you know so the qt is some like one and all that on these speakers okay so okay. they are supposed to work like an infinite baffle that's how and they assume that you know most of them anyways don't work below 80 hertz anyways because they assume you're going to go to a subwoofer so mm -hmm. they have a very stiff surround very mm. high fs mm. small magnet you know why you know why it actually in a large gap so the qt goes very high and most ceiling speakers not they can la they can actually say 91 db sensitivity because they have no diffraction loss it's an infinite baffle they, like a stand mount if you take the same driver and put it on a box in the front step, right no huh? no diffraction loss because of the baffle extending from the front but like you all were discussing earlier there are leakages and shit then that cancels out No, but where is the leakage? I mean, the leakage will be like what seven leakage eight feet away. Light fittings from. That's why I said always gasketed, always gasketed. That's why very clear about that. Boss, watch what you do with this. Right on the day one, you tell the architect, boss, gasket this. Hmm. There can be no air leakage. Okay. Yeah, that's why my point is, just don't construct the ceiling. It's not over. You have to tell the architect on day one, this will be gasketed. This cannot have a leakage. There can be no leakages in a. the the closest leakage you'll need can be is about 14 feet away where the air maybe there is some return air or something like that hmm so because you're crossing over 80 hertz you know but so, you mean to say that these these uh, ceiling speakers for the home home cinema i mean the home audio range hmm. they uh, they don't you should not even build a back box for them or build if you do if you do need speed. to do it if you do huh? need to do it now i always say it, boss ask the manufacturer Mm. There'll be some tech guy who will come back to you with an answer. Okay. Yeah, I, I, like in my brand, I do. Okay. Okay. I knew at some situations I need a back box. On okay. day one, before I took up the brand, I told him, boss, I need to know. I know you want me to use a speaker without a without a box. I accept that. Once in a way, I will need to use the box. I need to know mm. the size of the box. So he okay. gave me. If you're using a five incher, this is the size of the box. If you're using a six incher, this many liters. and in in some cases using an 8 uh, 8 inch this is the mm. volumetric size of the box but well, never do okay. it without the input of a uh, manufacturer uh kushu also one... okay yeah go ahead mazi could i continue uh, yeah, please, also uh, what please. is what is your opinion of ceiling subwoofers um and uh, should they be i used? love them you i love, love them. them i love them plus one but question construct, but constructing for them and putting it in real application like i said when i meet you pen to paper i can give you what experiences we've done what we've mm -hmm. done and how we've done it you mm -hmm. know because for that those americans who make that now they make the ceiling out of gypsum mm -hmm. and we use pop gypsum pop is the same thing yeah no 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 it is not the yeah, same it's not the it same is magnesium sulfate gypsum and pop is magnesium sulfate only thing is made into sheets which is your gypsum boss these guys put a layer they apply afterwards yeah so that leaves an air gap Hmm. because it's never even like an american ceiling our guys can never get that flat american ceiling and that air gap always exists over there even if you gasket it now that gasket wears out because of the weight of the driver so huge magnet on a subwoofer so what i do for in ceiling so i make the box straight away i i i just make the box though it's an infinite baffle 
I make a huge box which is an infinite baffle, which is larger than the VAS of the driver. Mm. You got it, Marasban. You immediately understood what I said. Yeah, but none of these manufacturers give you the VAS and all that for ceiling speakers. <laughs> <laughs> I know that. Now what to say, boss? <laughs> What to say? You might have to probe. You might have to probe into them. Uh, I think if you probe, which is why no, 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 boss. Uh, you are not getting an answer out of them. The Marasban is absolutely right. You are getting right. a. This is the answer you are getting from them. Zero. Which is why probably it's better to go back to them and ask them to uh, box, like design, the give you the. Yeah, say, tell me the size of the box. Yeah. Best thing to say. But okay, uh, this uh, begs the next question, uh, Kushru. Uh, so there is an interesting conversation happening in the chat window. Uh, so. Uh, there is one school of thought uh, which says that uh, uh, back box isn't required, and uh, the other school of uh, thought says that back box is required at certain uh, situations. So, where would you uh, advocate for a back box, and where would you say that back box might not be required? Efficiency bandwidth parameters. Okay. Could you if repeat anybody that? Anybody ask that question is a very simple thing, that. boss. Does anybody understand the EBP of a driver? Anyone wants to take that? Efficiency bandwidth parameter, EBP of a driver. Okay. Yes, yes. FS, FS, FS divided by QTS mm. gives you EBP. Yep. All right. If EBP is 100, it's a vented box driver. Simple. Mm. If EBP is closer to 50, it's a sealed box driver. So now it depends what your EBP is. If your EBP is 70, you don't need a enclosure because your ceiling will act like an infinite baffle. So having an opinion on this is dependent on what? When you're saying, oh, you need a back box. Some people, I don't need a back box. Why there should be a back box? Please understand, this comes out of the driver specification, what the driver is designed for. Therefore, I say most home audio guys, now, they need to get a car audio guy into the company to design a in-ceiling speaker. A guy who designs the best drive unit for home audio speaker is not the best guy to design an insulin speaker. Probably the wrong guy. Like a guy who designing home speaker, home audio speaker is not the best guy to design a pro audio horn loaded subwoofer. He's not the best guy. That those guys think differently. Any other questions from the audience? Ever wonder? I, I'll just. Try. Ever wonder, really think about it, okay? Why a big drive unit manufacturer, okay, who makes, I won't say the biggest driver, but a big pro audio drive unit doesn't make home audio drivers. Ever wonder? And the reverse also is true. They're a different set of engineers. Only. They are, their engineering mindset is only different in drive units. They think differently. That's what I'm trying to say. A lot of interesting comments in the chat window. I think, uh, yeah. Uh, anyone else who has got a question? Uh, Masban, if you can unmute. If you have any other questions, you can go ahead. Otherwise, uh, please unmute, uh, mute yourself. There can was I ask a question? Who... Yeah, Russell, please go ahead. Yeah, this is slightly different uh, offbeat uh, topic. And since Kushu had uh, touched on it, I just wanted to ask one question. On a, in a car audio on the you know, door panel of the on which the speaker is mounted, they normally put some kind of a sticky substance, like tar kind of a substance. Yeah, that's what a beautiful exactly? sheet. That's the sheet no, not, I spoke about. Yeah, not the sheet. It is kind of a paste that they put onto it. Is that actual bitumen itself? I've seen them that, doing that, it. That is, that, that's the new one that they do. That's a silicon-based kind of thing that they have in a gun and they kind of put it across, you know. That's to dampen the metal. metal. Basically, yeah, they're yes. basically doing the it's same thing. It's just a dampening material. Is this a dampening material? The same kind of thing I'm saying. Use it in a sheet form. Cut it, strip it, stick it with stick it with bostic. Put a tie rod on it for each and every one. You made it into stone. You stop that from resonating. Okay. That one. No, just... That that most ceiling, depending on this. If it's a four inch gap, it's usually one twenty hertz. It's around six inch gap. It's around usually ninety hertz. So depending on that, that gap rattles, you know, and then metal rattles. You have to kill the metal from rattling. I prefer a pine wood grid. Personally, you tell me I prefer a pine wood grid. It just sounds awesome. It just changes okay. the whole game. No, no, I'm coming from a different perspective. For, for, for the car, they, I've seen them putting that uh, yeah, yeah. kind of they a do, they damper kind metal. of thing, you know. 
the dampen the metal yeah but do you, do you know what it is and where is it available ask a car your guy boss he'll tell you <laughs> ask any car audio guy i'm not into it boss go to any big car audio guy who's fitting mm-hmm. they'll probably have the gun for it you know okay okay i don't know what it is i'm i've been out of car audio for 20 years you boss i don't know okay okay is there any car audio guys in the group you should ask them in fact they'll probably know what it is i'm not the right guy for that okay okay cool then anyway thanks uh, any yeah. other questions you said there's something interesting or somebody was asking no no the uh, the, uh, the the chat window raised some interesting uh, like observations so, yeah i just thought i'll probably draw your attention out there yeah please anyway uh, hey anyway, that's fine uh, you can also have a look at that any other questions uh, from the audience before we wind up I have a question. Yeah. I have a question. Go ahead, uh, Mazi. Ah, uh, Kushru, uh, how important is it to uh, stuff your ceiling with glass wool or some dampening material inside rather That's than what I said. hollow? When you're That's doing what I said. The home theater with ceiling speakers. That's what I said. You'll have to do it. You'll yeah. have to. You'll have you to have close to... that air column. It'll resonate otherwise, especially okay. when you have a speaker without a back box. Okay. It's very important to to close that. because it it's a spring yeah you know what happens with a spring mass i don't know to tell you boss you are a bap in that yourself mm no but like if it's an infinite baffle i thought maybe the air column itself is so large that it's not going to resonate because it's got no, so no but you see the yes you know but you know what we what you are absolutely right but you know what the problem is is it's only 6 inches hmm that that whole thing is a resonator entire thing behaves like a big bloody air resonator it's not mm-hmm. like i have a 12 inch gap you know mm-hmm. where 1 kilohertz is 12 inches you know 1/4 of that 250 cycles it's not it's only 6 inches and that creates the biggest problem at this 100 hertz to 125 hertz just as rattling here uh just to put it in perspective everything depends on your uh, mass as kushu said mass your uh, damping and your stiffness so these are all related uh, functions for a particular material so everything yeah. depends on that so when you have small uh, distance or small uh, let's say height then you are play uh, you, the ability of you to do the whatever you are doing is lower so you got to understand all these techniques yeah yeah your tolerances of adjustment and all that really go for a toss you know i've been really so, uh, really to very, put it in really perspective difficult. to put it in perspective as uh, kushu said uh, this is basically these are architectural speakers and uh, so uh, you require to have a very very good understanding right from the outset in terms of uh, being able to design and properly install these speakers in the ceiling because uh, if the ceiling as you said is not designed properly it can go the the entire uh, the insulation can go for a toss and this is not an afterthought this has to be done right in the design, right probably in the design phase and before the actual ceiling is uh, let's say cast or uh, made i'll i'll, I'll tell sense. you something over here which is very interesting okay in the beginning now for any any vendor any installer na who is a team na for the first four or five installs it's very challenging for him to figure out all the parts but the beautiful thing in an ensiling game is that once you've cracked it after those four or five installs six install after that whatever it is your staff becomes so intuitive in this because they know boss this is where the left is right is this is what the ceiling has to be this is how the ceiling is constructed this is how the subwoofer is tuned in the long run when you're doing 70 Fifty to seventy theaters a year, because otherwise that your business will not survive. Also, it becomes very intuitive. It's very quick because then you know you just put a side boss, do this, do this, do this. End of story. It's not like a you know everything tower speaker is very easy. Boss, every side is different. Every side is a challenge. Every tower is different. So, the in ceiling theater with a little bit of practice and patience becomes a factory. and a good sounding factory because you know exactly how to eq it you face problems it's a solution that is very quick and in the business point of view once you're working see no business survives i mean in in the all the guys over here till you don't you're not friendly to at least or not doing work with at least a dozen architects it's very difficult to survive in this game those dozen architects come into practice with you they know this is what is required this is what you're going to do this is how things work it's an advantage you know they always come back to you you know and that that's that's that that 
there is a part of the business in the av industry to survive has to be a factory you can't keep creating pieces of art you know every day it is not working here very well sir i think i yeah, think you, uh, you you put it very beautifully i think uh, the synergy that is required between the uh, interior and architect uh, team and the av design team needs to be uh, probably put into perspective and i think we need to have some engagements with those guys on a more regular basis i am not saying this for the project uh, sake but also i think at a more uh, at an uh, industrial level you know at an industrial level exactly with, you know so yeah, there's yeah. a so they, And, and 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 let's put it like this: any architect to survive, any architect, he needs to do twelve projects a year. Correct. One project a month. Otherwise, they will not survive. The office will shut down. All right. Right. You are friendly with twelve of them. They will give you fifty percent of the jobs or thirty percent of jobs. You are still sitting at fifty theaters, yeah, boss. Right. And you need, uh, out of fifty theaters, forty will be industrialized. Ten piece, ten places. Maybe you will get to create a Statue of Liberty. You know, <laughs> <laughs> a masterpiece. Okay. Yeah. So, and also so much so we have been discussing uh, uh home theater uh, ceiling speakers in a home theater or in a home environment suppose we are considering ceiling speakers for like say a banquet hall is there a recommended uh, seat to seat variance that uh, we need to consider in terms of decibels see in pro audio na i mean banquet hall first and foremost was banquet hall minimum height i think would be something like 18 feet no 14 More feet sometimes. 14 to 16 feet yeah 14 to 16 feet no and the big ones like a taj and all that was what 20 foot ceilings you know some yeah, of these yeah. huge ones double double height they yeah, are double heighted you know so even if so you take 14 would you, so then the question is would you use ceiling speakers in that case yes you know I, actually i need to do this you know I, i have i don't know if you have come across a magazine called in the 80s called sound and video contractor it used to be a brilliant magazine you know i used to have stacks of them and they used to actually show jobs you know you have done this casino in las vegas which 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 has a stage and bring pirates to the caribbean what are the sound stage you know that of jbl hla mm. so they used to also have thing like how churches were done different churches were done different offices were done how i remember i actually had an article on how the hong kong convention center was done with tanoys the entire schematic you know so they had an article of how ceiling speakers are done best in pro audio for banquet halls you know that's why i said i won't discuss this but since marzban has asked you know and out of like real respect for him is is asked a very pertinent question they seem to prefer a diamond for uh, uh 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 formation you know so usually we go in in line you know in ceiling speakers those guys prefer a diamond formation you know diamond one diamond two diamond three and that kind of gives a even spread out over the length of the hall so that is what i clearly remember from the article that you know try to have a diamond formation rather than a lateral formation you know in a line formation a diamond formation will always give you a better coverage and the the higher the ceiling goes the greater your coverage angle because of course that's what's going to happen you know and yeah. i remember one thing they had, they had a, a a sectional drawing putting a speaker with a certain uh, 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 coverage angle okay and then where the two lines merge at 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 an average sitting versus standing height so sitting or sitting at 42 inches standing you are at around your ear is around 64 65 inches average then you find an average sitting versus standing draw the sectional where they overlap you know what is the gain and then take a compass and draw the diamonds you know where they overlap in the width wise not just the height wise so that kind of thing used to happen physically now i bet you have ees and all these softwares which will tell you how to do it it's the easy part you know but uh large banquet halls if marasba if i'm not right you do a lot of harm and i think jbl uses a wonderful coaxial 8 inch right with a very very big dome tweeter actually in the 12 inch or the 8 inch which has been there for like donkeys years and they've never they've never needed to replace that speaker it's that good with a back end i think it's a very highly respectable loud speaker that jbl and in electro voice used to have a similar model so no, so uh, so uh, kushu my question was what is the correct uh, dv value for seat to seat variance i mean when you're doing a bank per hour should you consider 1.5 db 3 db yeah 1.5 db 1.5 db ideally anyways you'll not have more variance than that because Then the second speaker comes in, you know. So the 1.5 dB, as you move away from speaker one, 
and then when you come into the second speaker zone it's around a 1.5 db variance uh when you are critically listing you will hear a 0.25 db variance also now when you are critically listing you will 0.25 db also you will hear at bloody 6 kilohertz no but that's but why just said banquet or 1.5 db conversation is going on you are having a drink i think 1.5 db is more than enough yeah. mainly for background music application yeah 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 it's just moving going i mean you're just walking around you know and that too you know the the logarithmic scale is not that big in a banquet hall when your background is around at 80 80 db and you're hearing 81.5 it's less of a difference than hearing 90 and 91.5 <laughs> you know the, the okay. scale is not 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 that acoustic is still on a shallow climb rather than a steep climb you know okay okay i i think uh, which uh, will wind up right now we have exceeded our general uh, time uh, limit so uh, kushu uh, thanks a lot for your uh, time and thanks a, thanks a lot for your uh, wonderful session and uh, it was very insightful and i think we all took uh, a lot uh, from it uh, uh, we will we will uh, once again have a similar kind of session with uh, subject matter experts in our industry and uh, so yeah look forward to seeing you again all very soon thanks uh, everyone for attending and uh, yeah uh, i i actually look forward to doing something like this in person maybe i think uh, now that covid is uh, behind us we should uh, probably consider meeting in person at some point of time depending on uh, our schedules so we look forward to that uh, yeah uh, thanks everyone once again and uh, yeah see you in the next session have a good bye, rest of the day Yeah see bye you bye bye see you thank you okay.